On this week's episode, I go through how I shoot product photos and I do it at home. Okay, so COVID-19 or not, I'm still working in whatever capacity I can work. Um, what I'm actually doing today is rather than kind of like sitting around and pouring through the news, um, I'm actually gonna shoot some product because I did some work with Yonder a little while ago. I'll link that up somewhere, um, the behind the scenes stuff for that. Um, and they sent me some uh, goggles. So I need to do some photos for these guys, for uh, the Yonder team. So I'm gonna take you through kind of like how I shoot product, how I do it at home. I wouldn't normally kind of do it this way, but you know, we're in a pandemic, so this is how it's gonna work. Um, but I'll take you through the process. I'll show you what I do um, and I'll show you the images we got at the end of it. What I've got um, is a pretty simple setup. Firstly, I have a dining table that's already white, which is quite a big help, um, because all the product stuff we did um, ended up going onto white backgrounds in order to kind of blend in with the website. So it's kind of perfect that that's what we're working with, and it suits the fact that I've got a white table. So rather than the white table being the actual proper background, it's just gonna allow me to kind of like cut them out a little bit easier because it's consistent. Um, what I've got, apart from my uh, video light, which is kind of keeping me nicely lit throughout the day, um, day, it's not gonna take me a day, that's ridiculous. It'd be like the longest product shoot ever, it's only one product. That's gonna keep me lit relatively easily while I'm doing this. I've then got um, my main light. Now, this is my um, speed light with my beauty dish on it. And the reason that I've gone for a beauty dish um, isn't anything specific particularly. It's not because I'm thinking, you know, it's the best light to do uh, products with. It's just the best light modifier that I have to hand currently at home. In an ideal world, if I was shooting a load of product, then I'd probably look at other options. But right now, the best modifier I have um, of all the modifiers I have at home is my beauty dish. It's the nicest light, it's the softest light. It allows me to control uh, the light source that I'm working with really, really easily. So that's why I've gone with that. So. What I now need to do is uh, think about um, getting this sorted, how I'm gonna shoot it. I need to take the stickers off, as you can see, um, and get that set up, and then um, I'll go from there. That's the camera I'm gonna use. That's the product I'm gonna be shooting. That's the light source that I'm working with. A word on settings. This is why I tend to work from as a base from any studio session um, that I do. Anything that I'm working on the lights with, uh, this is where I tend to start. Um, to be fair, I kind of use this setting even if I'm outside shooting with lights with clients and stuff. Um, I mentioned about this in the last video about settings and stuff that I use for cameras. Um, this is based off of kind of what Joel Grimes uses for his studio when I was first kind of getting into studio photography this was the kind of thing that I was thinking about and um, like settings to start so it's ISO 200 it's 160th of a second and it's 7.1 it gives me a nice base to start with and to work from Okay, 
so um, it's the kind of it's a very very small shoot for me in reality. Um, what we'll do um, is I'll just really quickly run through uh, what I would normally do. So this is uh, we'll add this into a new folder for Yonder for when I shot Yonder. Uh, if you don't already know, I use uh, Photo, Photo Mechanics 6 for um, all my ingesting and kind of uh, working with files before I edit them. Um, make sure I spell goggles right because I normally put Googles, which is just wrong. Um, uh, for now, what I'm going to do is just. Oh, yeah, took some selfies. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, we'll just drop all of that in the folder. Um, and I can then work from there. So this is taking over all the uh, raw files. Um, doesn't need the JPEG previews. Um, I always shoot in raw when I do studio or portrait stuff like this. It just allows me to have a bit more control over what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, that kind of stuff. So let's drop into this folder. I don't want loads. I don't particularly need a lot. That'll do. Um, now I prefer this one to this one because um, these images go square crop when they go on the website and I don't really want to lose a great deal. Then I tried some different angle stuff but it's, it's quite a challenge to be fair um, to get them in focus. So I might use that one. Uh, okay cool, we'll do that for now. So uh, select my tags, there's only five, I don't need a lot. It's only a kind of a small producty thing anyway. Um, we already have a collection for yonder for 2000 so i'm not gonna put any developer settings on because actually no i am because we have a yonder 2020 preset don't need to worry about metadata because i'm going to do a lot of stuff which that strips it all out anyway okay so what we did with um the yonder stuff is you can see the presets now starting to load in we um everything got presetted and then we would do all this kind of like square cropping and stuff uh, and all the other work in Photoshop. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through this one here and show you how we do it. So we're going to right click on the image, edit in, edit in Photoshop 2020. Okay, so <clears throat> what I actually did in order to speed my life up is I created an action for it. Um, so called it Yonder Cut. And what it does is really simple. Actions, if you don't know how to use actions, it's well worth digging into Google and YouTube to find it out. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna duplicate the layer, um, it's gonna make um, a new layer, change the canvas size, it's gonna uh, do a whole bunch of bits and pieces and then add a layer mask and stuff. So if you watch this, uh, you'll see. So what it's gonna do um, over here, it's gonna duplicate it. The reason that we duplicate layers in Photoshop when we're working like this is so that you've got a an original so you don't lose that original because if you lose that original you're up creep with that paddle basically uh, if you accidentally save it it's going to go back into Lightroom as a tiff and then you're going to be working with that and not the original and then you're gonna have to dig the original out and it's, it's just not worth the hassle so what this has done is it's created a, a duplicate layer that I can work on uh, we'll turn off the bottom layer it's created a brand new layer and added the layer mask over the top and then it's done um, a select subject on its own what i'm going to do though is i'm going to because i want the shadows for this a little bit as well um, i'm actually going to uh, try and add some of those shadows in here don't worry too much if this isn't kind of very fine because i'll show you what else we did uh what we now do is we drop onto the layer mask <clears throat> make sure that the black and whites for foreground and background are set like this and then you press um, alt and delete and what that does is that copies that selection up onto the layer mask um, so you can see it um, at the moment the opacity for that layer that top layer is 45 percent because then when you bring it up everything goes white what i want to do though is i just want to like tidy these shadows up down here um, and just check that i've got all the edges because there's a few edges here that are missing so we'll just drop that back down and the reason for that is is this so if i now kind of zoom in um, you can then grab a brush and because it's a layer mask you can just do this it's really simple you just basically brush over what's missing and fill it in it's way easier to do really fine things like this when you're uh, working with a layer than if you're trying to select a I always talk really slowly when I do this uh, rather than if you're trying to um, select a 
Um, what's the word? Rather than if you're trying to like select the subject using the selection tool. Um, so this seems a bit funny here. I'm not sure. It might be a product thing more than anything. Okay, all of that. That's fine. So that looks good. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to flip my brush. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, and I'm just going to tidy these shadows up just a touch, just to make sure that they look a bit soft. Because part of the that's way wrong. Part of the thing with um, composites, if you will, in Photoshop and all that kind of stuff is you run the risk, if you're not careful, of uh, making it look a bit too fake because you lose the shadows. So one thing I learned from uh, Tim Wallace, who's a motorsport photographer, he does a lot of automobile stuff. So it's a lot of vehicle in-studio stuff and his work's amazing. And what I learned from him is that if you just always try and keep those shadows, what you end up doing is keeping the reality of what you're making. So if you just take the shadows away, it just looks fake. Whereas if you just keep those shadows in place, it kind of works. So because I'm already on a table and that table's already, just tidy that up. Because that table's already um, white-ish and it's already creating the shadows from what I'm doing. It just, this just allows me to keep everything nice and tidy, keep the shadow, keep it looking relatively realistic. So you just see, and all I'm doing is basically working around with the brush. So now, in theory, if we then zoom out and we bring the opacity back up, you'll see that you now drop onto a white background um, for the product, keeps the shadows, makes it look relatively realistic. Okay, so now what we've done, so we've got that product done, I'm now gonna save and quit. Now what the save and quit action does um, is, yeah, so we're just gonna crop it. So what we're basically doing is we're making the, um, making it underneath just that bit bigger. So we've got, we can crop it square a bit easier. Can't type today at all. It's really hard to do this work and talk at the same time, it's weird. But it, so basically what that save function does is it crops it square, um, it brings the opacity back on the layer that was on top with the layer mask, and then drops it all back into Photoshop and away, into Lightroom, sorry, and then away we go. I've just given it a little straighten because I didn't feel it was quite straight. And there we go, we have a set of goggles that was shot on a dining room table um, in COVID-19 social distancing lockdown um, and we've made it look kind of cool. So I'm going to work through the other images now, send them back off to the client and then done for the day. So thanks for watching everyone. Um, I know it's probably feeling a bit random. I'd love to be out shooting some sports and stuff. I know everyone's in exactly the same boat um, but hopefully kind of this has given you something you can have a play with and have a work with and kind of see how I do it on a very basic uh, straightforward level. Have a great rest of the week. Keep yourself nice and safe. Um, adhere to all your social distance stuff. Um, let's kind of kick this virus in the ass as quickly as we can so we can all go back to work and life and continue normally again. If you haven't already hit subscribe, hit like, give me a follow on Instagram um, and we'll be in touch very soon. Bye.